walked on. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Rob. Um, as we were singing our song. And I would like to invite our practitioner of the day to um, do our opening prayer, our invocation. That's Reverend Leslie Massapus. Oops. Let's just take a deep breath. And we declare that we are ready for another awesome day that God is unveiling before us. It is a day full of love and life and joy. And we are all on the spiritual journey here today. And it is one which reveals to us some of the mysteries, the spiritual mysteries of life and how to use them. And we are grateful for this. And so we take in this information here today, knowing that it feeds our soul and it is part of our spiritual journey of life that we are sharing together. So we say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to join together and share this time of spirituality and growth. And together we say, and so it is. Our quote for today comes from Ernest Holmes' book, This Thing Called Life. And he says, in actual practice, Suppose you find yourself confronted by a problem which you seem unable to solve. Instead of thinking about the problem, turn from it to a recognition that the life principle has no problems. Know that the mind within you already understands the solution to this problem. State definitely that the mind within you knows what to do. Affirm that you are inwardly guided by the supreme intelligence of the universe. Affirm that everything you ought to know, you do know. Affirm that you are compelled to make right decisions. Know that there is something within you which will not permit you to make a mistake. And let's join in a minute of silence as we prepare for today's service. We now open our eyes and come back to the service. And our affirmation for the month of May says, with unshakable confidence, I participate fully and freely in the adventure of life. I am an ambassador of revolutionary love. I release my old story and embrace a new inspired vision of my life. The great I am within me guides and supports me. I am one with the love and the law of infinite spirit. And so it is. And Richard, we are now ready for your music. And I will get that up for us. Hang on just a minute. I have to do a little dance. <laughs> oh, wait. Do 
60s or 70s, trying to remember, remember exactly when it was. Yeah, here's a song uh, called Here's to Life. Uh, Shirley Horn had a big hit with it back in the 60s or 70s, trying to re remember exactly when it was. But uh, what it is, it's about dealing with the challenges, the ups and downs of life, the opportunities. Uh, the possibilities, of course, are endless. We're free to create something magical. We can do it. And life gives us the opportunities, the good the bad and the ugly. Here's to life. No complaints and no regrets. I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets. For I have learned that all you give is all you get. So give it all you got. I've had my share, I've drunk my fill And even though I'm satisfied, I'm hungry still To see what's down another road Beyond a hill and do it all again So here's to life And all the joy it brings Here's to life dreamers and their dreams Richard, that was beautiful. When you said, when you told me you were going to do Here's to Life, I had a, a completely different song in my mind for some reason, but that was lovely and certainly folds right into um, the talk that I'm presenting today. So perfect. And hello to any of you that have joined us um, since, since we began. 
I'm looking at all these beautiful faces. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. Um, so good morning and welcome to One Heart, One Mind Center for Spiritual Livings online Sunday service on this fabulous, well, although it is overcast, fabulous first Sunday in May. I actually like the overcast. So the theme for May is a holy, holy uprising. I actually wrote it down. I want to share my screen with you because it's such it's kind of a kind of a fun um theme for may a holy holy uprising so um it's holy with a wh so meaning everything is included nothing is missing um the allness of uh, and presence of life is within that and holy meaning with a just an h meaning sacred um, everything is holy now. We, we did that song last week, and I, I think of it that way, that everything that I decide is sacred and holy is sacred and holy, and I, I get to decide what that is. And uprising, which, I mean, it could be a, um, a insurrection, or it could just mean an ascent, a rising up. And for our metaphysical purposes, I think that fits pretty well. A rising up of life, a holy, holy uprising. And so I'm, I'm going to define it as an experience of everything in all of creation as a sacred expression of the presence of spirit rising up and leading us forward. And that's what we'll be talking about all month in, in May, a holy holy uprising so i'm looking forward to that i hope you are too and uh this week's talk today's title that today's talk title is uh this adventure called life which sounds like a holy holy uprising to me you know in our our modern culture we've we've come to define the word adventure as something kind of exciting and unknown and unusual experience but it has kind of this hint of risk in it, you know, like we don't know. It's going on an adventure seems like it's definitely taking a chance because it's a, an unknown. We don't know what's going to occur or what's going to be there. However, originally, because you know how I love to look up the etymology of the origin of words, uh, the word adventure comes from uh, the Latin root, and let me see if I can remember how to say it, it is advin, ad, advinare, meaning to arrive, to come to, which fits perfectly with, with what our founder, Ernest Holmes, taught through the science of mind um, philosophy, that we are coming home, we are arriving to a recognition of that presence, however we experience it, that presence of the divine. On his radio show in the 1950s, I don't know exactly what year it was, he gave this talk called um, Self-Reliance and Your Adventure, where he proclaimed that God is our adventure. He was quite the order, Ernest Holmes. If you've never had a chance to listen to him, Google a couple of his uh, talks or his radio shows, it's pretty interesting. So he proclaimed that God is our adventure because the greatest adventure in life is arriving or coming to home where uh, we find the God within us. So we arrive at that recognition. We come to that experience of the God that's within us. And it's, it's an adventure that calls us to this awareness of who we really are and a realization that no matter what's going on in the outside world, when we're grounded in that home and that spirit internally, there's actually no risk and there really is no failure. And when we're centered in God, we, we start to become comfortable with the uncertainty that is inherent in our human lives. We're doing, a, Maureen Bishop is doing a, a review of a book called The Art of Uncertainty, where we talk about the fact that when we're grounded in the spirit, uncertainty is not a risk and it's not a challenge. It's, we can feel comfortable with whatever shows up in our outside world. 
you know, I turned 66 in January. Interesting how that sounds younger and younger as I get older and older. Did you ask me at 30 how old 66 was? I would have said it was ancient. It doesn't sound so old anymore. But but recognizing that I'm 66, it sort of it's made me start thinking. Well, you know, I probably have a good 25 active and productive years left in my lifetime. Maybe 30 or maybe even 35 if if I continue to take care of myself and do my daily spiritual practices. And these thoughts have brought me to some really interesting questions about who the real me is. Who am I really? Because I got to tell you, the truth is that I don't feel any different now that when, than when I was 18 or even when I was five years old. Sure, you know, I, I get that I'm mentally more mature and I'm physically more mature. But the person who is looking through these eyes is the same person. That being that is, is looking out through these eyes and using this body to travel through time and space is not defined by anything in my outside world. You know, I'm, I mean, I've come to identify as this person, you know, by my name and, and my body and my experiences and my family and my relationships. But the truth is that none of these things are actually me. These things aren't the me that is witnessing myself in the world move through this human experience. So who am I then? Who are all of us? Who are we? And that question really begins the great adventure, this great adventure called life. You know, I'm not defined by anything that I see or hear or feel or experienced. I am the one, the consciousness who sees, hears, feels, and experiences. I'm the witness that is having this human experience. You know, this is the greatest and most profound adventure of all, discovering who and what this witness, this consciousness is and how it works and how we can use it to bring the most to our lives and contribute to, to all of life from this source, you know, to contribute to everything that, in everything that we do and in, and how we show up. So this, this really, I mean, honestly, this really truly is the great adventure and, and we can call this great adventure, a journey to enlightenment, um, an expansion, a moving into at one moment with life or with the God within us. But honestly, it's simply just a realization of who the real us is. Um, who is this person, this witness that is part of this larger life, a larger whole? And this whole is larger than our humanness, the whole with a W. It's the source of our humanness. It's, it's timeless and it's infinite. And the adventure is living in this mystery of who and what this greater consciousness is and exploring it and experiencing it. Isn't that a great adventure? You know, as I was as putting together my talk, I was thinking about how this presence, this witness is the same presence that Moses encountered on the desert mountain of Horeb. You know, as the biblical story from Exodus tells us, and we probably all heard the story of Moses in the burning bush, Moses was tending his sheep on the mountain and he saw a bush that was on fire. But the miraculous thing about the burning bush was not, was not that it was on fire, but the fire did not consume the bush. It just continued to burn. And Moses, who didn't understand what he was seeing, it began to turn away. And then the story goes that God called to Moses from the midst of the bush, the fire, the light that didn't burn out. And he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses, Moses said, here I am. And God told him to take off his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. And I think this piece is worth noting that the very earth where Moses stood 
God called holy ground. Moses wasn't as in a temple, which was the place where that was reserved at the time for any kind of contact or experience of the divine or God, but it was just him and his bare feet and the earth underneath them, right where he stood. That God or the, the story calls holy ground. And, and honestly, where we all stand is holy ground. It just depends on our perspective of how we see life. So then the story goes on and, and God went on to tell Moses who he was, that he was the God of all of Moses' ancestors and, and that he saw that his people were suffering at the hands of the Egyptians and that, and that he was going to send Moses to the Pharaoh to tell him to release his people and to take them to the land flowing with milk and honey. And there's a lot of rich metaphor in all of this. But the part that I really want to draw our attention to this morning is, is this, that then Moses asked God, when I see the Pharaoh, who shall I say sent me? And God replied, and I love this line. And this is the line I thought of as I was thinking about the great adventure. And God replied, I am that I am. Tell him that I am has sent you. I am. I get chills saying it. I am. What a powerful way to describe this infinite presence that burned the bush without consuming it. The I am presence that burned within Moses, the I am presence that is looking out through my eyes at the screen, the same I am presence that is looking out through your eyes right now. I am, what a wonderful way to describe the divine presence that is within all life. And, and it also describes how we, as expressions of the I am presence, Share that same nature of the original source of I am. We, we share its nature and we participate with its creative law. The I am, it's, it's a universal presence and it's also a personal presence expressing as us and as all life. But it's, it's grand and big, and it expresses individually in every expression of creation. And when we affirm I am, it's one of the most powerful statements we can make. Creative law works in such a way that when we place I am in front of a statement such as I am whole, I am peace, I am prosperous, I am joyous, and we say it with feeling and conviction, we become that something. We co-create that something into our human experience. I have a quote from Ernest Holmes about just this. And let me get that up here for you. Holmes wrote this on, in the Science of Mind textbook on page 44. He wrote, undoubtedly, we are surrounded by and immersed in a perfect life, a complete, normal, whatever that is, happy, sane, harmonious, and peaceful existence. But only as much of this life as we embody will really become ours to use and that's important only as much of the, of this life that we embody becomes what we create in our outer world that's important to remember what we embody in consciousness what we acknowledge about who that i am within us is that's what we create in our experience. That's what we demonstrate into our human life. Which brings me to the next piece of our great adventure. So the witness self, our higher, our, 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 our authentic self, tongue twister, the I am that Moses discovered that we are, is the one who is always conscious. 
you know, and we're conscious all the time, whether we're awake or asleep or in a coma or after our bodies die and we go on to the next plane of existence, we are infinite beings and that consciousness is always with us. And in the science of mind teaching, we teach that our consciousness is infinite because we are one with, we are united in the one life and we cannot be separate from it. But here's the thing, we can, however, imagine that we are separate from it. And as we travel through our human experience in what looks like these individual bodies, we can imagine ourselves as separate entities. And we each have something that helps us to move through our human experience. We call it the ego. And it's the part of us that thinks and feels and distinguishes itself from other people, other animals, other objects. It's the part of ourselves that helps us to navigate and quite frankly, to survive our human experience. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of think the ego has gotten a bad rap along the way because we actually need our ego to be, to successfully move through this human experience. But the trouble comes when we begin to think that our human ego is the real us rather than that I am. Then it kind of gets us into trouble. Then we start seeing the world as this kind of dog eat dog. I better get mine before you get it first kind of place. And that thinking tends to spark fear. And it makes us think that this physical world is our source and that something outside ourselves is what sources and supports us. And that just isn't the case. That's just not true. The ego is great at helping us run from a hungry lion or avoiding dark alleys at night. And it helps us navigate social norms and social customs, but it's not our source and it is not our supply. It doesn't supply meaning or purpose or love to our life. The ego helps us to navigate the world of form by interpreting it through our five senses. It translates for us what we see and hear and feel and taste and smell from the outside world. But it is the I am presence, the I am of our being that supplies the meaning and the purpose and the love to our lives. And all of those good juicy things that are available to us through our oneness with that I am presence. The great adventure is learning how to interpret the world from that higher self rather than only from that ego self. We call it the lower self sometimes. You know, the ego is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. There's this great um, Indian spiritual master who was around in the early 20th century. His name was, um, let's see if I can remember, Ramana Maharishi. And he used to tell his disciples to ask consistently, persistently, and in every moment, who sees when I see? Who hears when I hear? Who feels when I feel? And who is the witness to my life? He taught that self-realization means that we realize who this consciousness inside us is, our higher self which is much more than our human ego self. This great human adventure that we're on is a call to arrive, as the original meaning of, of adventure tells us, to come to the understanding of who we want to run the show and to know that we're empowered to choose who we want that to be, our lower ego self or our higher divine self, the I am. Think about that for a moment. It seems to me that we spend a lot of time trying to feel comfortable inside our own skin. We want to feel comfortable in the internal environment of our human experience. Everything we do really is about making ourselves feel safe and secure and comfortable and happy and loved and joyous. We want to feel good. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. 
actually feeling good is our natural state of being. But we spend an awful lot of time focused on how we can do that from the outside in, on trying to figure out how we can change our external environment to make our internal environment feel better. And quite frankly, we have to do it from within. So here's the big question. And the question that I asked myself as I was putting together this message, what is it like most of the time in my internal environment? What is it like within your internal environment most of the time? Are you usually content and happy? Or do you spend a lot of time feeling uncomfortable? Do you think you have to be more or do more or get more to make life feel good? And if you're anything like me, and you probably are, there are times when you feel really good. And those times are getting more and more frequent. But there are also times, if I'm completely honest, when I really feel that great inside. There are times when things feel pretty uncomfortable in here. And this science of mind philosophy that we practice teaches us and points us in the direction of knowing, of practicing, and learning the skills to make it comfortable inside no matter what's happening in the outside world. And while I have not yet myself achieved, achieved a, a state of blissfulness all the time, I'm getting much better at it. So for me, this great adventure is still underway. I'm still coming to learning to arrive at that place of knowing who I am in the great I am more and more of the time. And I do that through my spiritual practice of learning to go within and connecting with that I am and choosing to let it run the show. You know, so let's talk about the things that are ours to do to keep our internal world as comfortable and as beautiful and as enjoyable as possible. You know, there have been times in my life when I did everything I could do to try and feel better from the outside in. You know, I think I've tried it all. You know, I've looked to alcohol, to uh, relationships, to career, to searching for what will make me feel better about myself, searching for something that could make me feel more whole, something on the outside. And I believe that is literally the definition of addiction. We were talking about this last Tuesday, Wednesday evening in, in Maureen's uh, class, looking for something outside ourselves to make us feel comfortable inside ourselves. And as human beings, we can be addicted to almost anything, alcohol, drugs, work, gambling, sex, Facebook, gaming, and on and on and on. And our great adventure is to learn to look within to find the peace and the contentment and the love and the joy that we've been trying to find by looking outward. That is the great adventure. And ultimately, that's the only place where we're truly going to find any kind of lasting comfort, peace, and love. And the best way I know how to figure out how to make our internal world feel good is to figure out why it doesn't feel good sometimes. There are really only a few things that we experience within. We experience the outside world, as I said, coming in through our five senses. We all do that. We all, this is the way that we experience our physical world. We actually experience it in our head, but it looks like it's all happening out there. So we experience the world through our five senses. And then our mind responds by creating thoughts and stories and judgments and reasons why things are the way that they are out there in the outside world. And then our mind tries to bring order and understanding to what's happening around us. And finally, our bodies respond by creating emotions that match the thoughts, the stories that we've spun. You know, and, and we've talked about this before in his work, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza calls this the 
thinking, feeling, and being loop. You know, we think a thought so often that, and we write a particular story so many times that it creates a neural pathway in our brain. And then our limbic system responds by creating hormones that trigger emotions that match the thoughts. And, and this happens so often that we create this pattern, uh, this repetition and this pattern, this loop, and we trigger it often without even realizing it. And it takes that same kind of rep, uh, repetition, but we have to do it consciously, the, the created the pattern in the first place to change the pattern, to change into something new. So now we have to ask ourselves, what do I need? What do I need to shift my awareness to make my I am presence, that consciousness, that awareness of the witness self that is within us, what do I need to do to make that the place I go to, to create the thoughts I think and the feelings I feel. How do I consistently go within to be sourced and supplied and supported by this presence? And of course, as we talk to all the time, talk about all the time, we have many, many spiritual practices that we teach in the science of mind philosophy to help support us in that effort. And we have practitioners that can help support us in that effort. And we have this wonderful community that helps us remember who we are, that remembers that I am presence when we sometimes forget it. And, but we individually have to take action and actually do the practice. We actually have to reach out for the help. We actually have to come into community to be supported. You know, I just wanna finish up with this. In his book, Michael Singer, The Untethered Soul. I mean, I know we've read a couple of his books kind of collectively here, but in his book, The Untethered Soul, Michael Singer has this great story about a thorn. I'm just going to read it a little piece of it because I think it, it uh, illustrates the point I'm making here today. He wrote, imagine that you have a thorn in your arm that directly touches a nerve. When the thorn is touched, it's very painful because it hurts so much. The thorn is a serious problem. It's difficult to sleep because you roll over on it. It's hard to get close to people because they might touch it. It makes your life very difficult. You can't even go for a walk in the woods because you might brush the thorn against the branches. This thorn is a constant source of disturbance. And to solve the problem, you only have two choices. The first choice is to look at your situation and decide that since it's so disturbing, when things touch the storm, you need to make sure that nothing touches it. And the second choice is to decide that since it's so disturbing when things touch the, sore, the thorn, you need to take it out. You need to remove the thorn. So the obvious choice here is to remove the thorn. But if I'm completely honest, how many times have I just left that thorn in and tried desperately not to disturb it? <laughs> we have throughout our lives collectively collected many different thorns, many different patterns of thinking and feeling and being that loop I was talking about earlier. And how many times have I simply tried not to have to disturb the thorn. But right now I wanna commit. I wanna to commit to you and to myself to make my life's great adventure to remove the thorn, to return home to the great I am presence that's within me. And as I become more and more familiar with this I am presence that is within me, the more I can move into that space while just walking through my daily life. You know, I will ask, I commit to asking myself, just as, the, as Ramana Maharishi told his disciples, who sees when I see? I can ask myself this. Who hears when I hear? Who feels when I feel? Who witnesses my life? 
And I invite you today to do the same thing, to join with me, to ask yourself, how am I seeing my world? Am I trying to avoid the thorn? Am I just going to pull that out and move into connection with the great I am within me. I invite you to join me on this great and this glorious adventure to discover that I am presence and let it be your life. So let's move into a time of prayer, taking in that deep centering breath coming into that I am presence. It's the only thing that is. It is life. It is creator. It is everything. It is love and it is patience and it is kindness. It is the essence and the profound presence of life itself. And it holds everything within its circumference. What is that line? It's, it's um, center is, is everywhere and it's circumference is nowhere, or maybe it's the other way around. God is present in every situation, in every life, in all things. We are a part of its beauty and its wonder and its magnificent and its life is our life and our life is its life. So I speak my word for and about each and every person that is present here on this Zoom call, anyone who hears it as a recording, anyone that is present in this um, thing we call life. I speak my word that there is a shift in consciousness, an opening, a newness, a, um, a flow of life and presence that knows who it is, that knows that we are connected and centered in the allness of love, in the allness of prosperity, in the allness of beauty and love and wisdom, and that everything we need is already given, and that our job is to open the floodgates, to stand in that full flow of the beauty and the and the resilience and the momentum and the perfection of the divine that is us. So as I stand in this in deep gratitude and open hands, as I announce these words into the capable hands of law, I know they're already true. And I know that all life is flooded with this sense of absolute love, of the generosity of, of spirit itself. And I accept this and I relax in it and I feel its presence. And we signify our agreement to this by saying, and so it is. Deep breath. <laughs> As I come back into a, a realization of where I am. <laughs> oh, so. Oh, what a delight to be here with you, all of you today. I'm just so grateful. And this is our time of conscious giving. And I would like to make um, a personal request. You know, we know that um, giving financially, giving in any way is a spiritual practice. And that when we give um, of our money, our money flows back to us. When we give of our time, our time flows back to us. When we give of our love, our love flows back to us. That whatever we give is magnified in, in its return to us. And our spiritual center needs your financial support to do what we do. And I am inviting you to give a little extra so that we may continue to be present in this teaching, to share its, um, its benefits, to share its power and its ability to transform lives. And I am asking you that um, as someone who practices and lives and teaches this philosophy, I believe successfully, 
and um, inviting you to share not only your time and your love and your community, but your finances as well. And also to invite other people that you know or might think would benefit from our philosophy to join in on our Sunday morning. And if they are not available to join in, to direct them to our Facebook page or our website where they can hear the message and, and be able to benefit from the teaching, which in my experience is very powerful. So I invite, I make a personal request to you for that this, this morning. And I would like for you to know that there are many ways that you can give um, financially to our center. I'm going to put them up here on the um, screen. And then I'm going to invite you to uh, say our affirmation. Uh, our giving affirmation. So you can give on Venmo, which I do because it's so easy and there's no charge or you can give on Tithely, or you can send a snail mail check to Jim Massapist, who will post his, uh, his um, what am I trying to say, his address on our, in our chat room. I'm going the wrong way here. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to change the, the screen to our affirmation. And here's the affirmation for sacred giving. And I invite you to say it with me. I recognize that my gift is an instrument of the energy and love of God. As it flows from me, it uplifts and advances all life, including mine. I give and I receive joyously. I am so grateful. And so it is. So we are, we are having our, um, our general meeting on May 23rd. And we will talk at that time. We have some board members that are, are going to be shifting out. And we will talk at that time about um, going back into the temple to meet once a month in person. And I'm really looking forward to that. So um, I'm going to give this over to Leslie. I know she's got some announcements. Tomorrow evening at 6.30 is the uh, spiritual journey in the 12 step program that Reverend Michelle is facilitating. And we will be talking about the fifth step of the program. And Tuesday at six o'clock is our spiritual inoculation. And that's going to be led by Robert Brown. And Robert, I don't know, do we have a topic for that yet? Uh, we do, we do now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the um, the topic will be gratitude as a path to prosperity. Great, look forward to that. And then Wednesday evening is Maureen Bishop with the book discussion. And Maureen, what are we going to be talking about on Wednesday? Well. Um... I don't have the book in front of me. It's chapters 9, 10, and 11. We're continuing on the art of uncertainty. And we're, one of the topics will be persistence, which uh, Michelle was talking about, Maharshi, um, Ramana Maharshi. And uh, we'll talk a little more about that concept. OK. And I don't believe there are any other announcements. So we are ready for our practitioner for our uh, benediction. And that it's is me. Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just get comfortable and let's come together and join again in consciousness, just knowing that we are one and join with me in giving great gratitude for this vehicle called Zoom, which allows us to come together as a family, knowing our unity and being able to see each other and express feelings. And I give gratitude, and I'm sure we all give gratitude for the wonderful messages today, especially for Reverend Michelle and for the music. Thank you, Richard. And for our opening treatment, thank you. Thank you, Leslie, and for everyone that makes up this community. 
And I also look forward this week, we shift our vision to creating from within, creating a reality based on this oneness with source and allowing the great I am to guide us and knowing with love that we remove all thorns. So thank you, God. So I release this. I know it is so, and together we say, and so oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. Beautiful, Maureen. Thank you so much. And I'm going to do our closing song, which is, um, it's in every one of us, which probably everyone knows the lyrics to. So I'm going to go ahead and get that up here. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every It's in every one of us to be free. Find your heart, open your eyes and see. We can all know everything just by knowing it's to be. It's in every was beautiful what a good reminder i thought that was perfect closing for today's talk it's it's in every one of us <laughs> so hello again if anybody would like to share um talk about either the 